On March 12, 1928, at 11.57 p.m., St. Francis Dam collapsed, killing over 500 people in what would be known as the worst civil engineering disaster in California's history. But let's not start there. Why was there a dam here in the first place? Who built the dam? And what significance does this have for Americans today? Let's find out. At the end of the 19th century, mankind's perceived dominance over the elements was undeniable. We had conquered the seas, the land, the air, but not the rivers. There were a couple of untapped resources, one being hydropower and the other being the control of water flow. Soon dams started popping up everywhere. They were like, you get a dam, you get a dam, you, 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 you get a dam. Meanwhile, in a dusty, dry western town called Los Angeles, the Bureau of Water Works and Supply Chief Engineer, a man named Willie Mulholland, drew up plans for a dam to hold enough water in case of a drought or some unforeseen natural disaster were to compromise the city's water supply. So just a little backstory on this guy. So Willie Mulholland made his fortune by piping water from the Owens Lake all the way to Los Angeles uh, and creating an aqueduct called the Los Angeles Aqueduct that is still in operation today. So here we are in Owens Valley Lake, at one point Southern California's largest water supply, about 230 miles north of downtown Los Angeles. You're probably asking yourself, well, hey, Derek, where the f is all the water? Exactly. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up! And within a short 15 year period, this lake was completely dry. It's as dry as you see it today. Which is f So, Willie Mulholland decides to build the dam because Angelinos be thirsty. See, Mr. Gibbs, either you bring the water to L.A. or you bring L.A. to the water. So the dam was built, housing just over 12 billion gallons of water. The day of the disaster, William Mulholland was called out to inspect a leak in the wall of the dam, detected by one of his workers. He checked it out and was like, no, 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 it's all good. That's just a normal amount of leakage. Well, it wasn't. Later that night, at exactly 11.57 p.m., the dam broke through, sending building-sized slabs of concrete down San Francisco Canyon, and with it, over 12.5 billion gallons of Los Angeles' water supply. The water engulfed whole towns, dozens of ranches, an Edison construction camp, the Harry Carey Indian Reservation and Trading Post, and the DWP Powerhouse No. 2. It swept through Castaic Junction along the Santa Clara Riverbed, through Filmar, Santa Paula, and finally, the sea. It demolished over 1,200 houses, washed out 10 bridges, knocked out power lines, washed away almost 40 acres of farmland, and bodies washed ashore as far south as San Diego. So there are obviously still dams in active use today. The United States is filthy with them. So what's preventing another disaster from happening on this level again today? Well, you'd probably say better technological advancements, more oversight, or things are just generally better now, right? Maybe. I don't know. For the last five years, California's been in the worst drought in recorded history. But as of 2017, and after the wettest winter in a century, uh, we've hit a brand new set of problems. That is too much water. Uh, and the most significant or obvious example of that is the Oroville Dam in Northern California. Here in Northern California, on the western slope of the Sierra Nevada, flow the clear, sparkling waters of the Feather River. Oroville Dam. It's America's tallest dam and an essential part of California's water supply. But after months of torrential rains, the dam is near capacity and the main spillway is critically damaged. How did no one catch this before, you ask? Well, California's been in a drought, remember? This is such a serious situation that the mandatory evacuation was ordered for over 200,000 surrounding residents. As climate change accelerates and becomes more of an issue, it only increases the strain on California's water infrastructure. So thankfully the rainy season is over in California. But if the winter of 2018 is anything like that of 2017, we're in deep shit. Or should I say deep water? <laughs> Not funny. Southern California has always had water issues and it always will. I think the question is, is there something that history can teach us? 
and more importantly, are we willing to listen? Mm -hmm.